A Korean scholar over in the U.S. is among the winners of this year's Ig Nobel Prize, which is said to be a good-natured parody, if you will, of the Nobel Prize and awarded to amusing but thought-provoking advances in diverse fields. Welcome to Issues and Insiders. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with one of the winners of this year's Ig Nobel Prize, who secured the honor in the category of public health for his development of a smart toilet. I have Dr. Sungmin Park at Stanford University live on the line. Dr. Park, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Yeah, thank you for having me today. It's my great pleasure and honor to meet you. The pleasure is all ours, Dr. Park. So congratulations on your win. How do you feel? Um, yeah, receiving the Ig Nobel Prize for Public Health has been both humbling and exciting. <laughs> it beautifully encapsulates the idea that research, while profound, can have a numerous edge. I'm really grateful for this recognition. Dr. Park, what's been the response from those around you with regard to your win? Yeah, everyone around me have been incredibly supportive. There's a hint of amusement, of course, given the unique nature of the award. But overall, the excitement and pride from my peers, family, and friends have been palpable. My wife, who stood by me throughout the entire Smart Toilet development, she is most ardent admirer. Right, I see. Dr. Park, now before we delve into your invention, for the sake of those who may not be familiar with the Ig Nobel Prize, could you take some time to explain it in detail for us? Yes, uh, of course. The Ig Nobel Prize, in essence, celebrate research that makes uh, first people laugh, then think. It's not about trivializing science, but rather emphasizing its diverse and sometimes unexpected nature. While the Nobel Prize highlights the groundbreaking discoveries, the Ig Nobel spotlights the unconventional yet equally crucial facets of scientific inquiry. A prime example is Dr. Andre Gein, who first secured an Ig Nobel for levitating a frog in a high magnetic field and later earned the Nobel Prize in physics for his groundbreaking work on graphene using a simple scotch tape. Amazing. Dr. Park, now, do tell us a bit about your smart toilet. Yes, the smart toilet, uh, as known as uh, precision healthcare toilet, goes beyond the ordinary, you know, latrine. Integrated with uh, cutting edge multimodal sensors, including optical sensors, also known as camera. And artificial intelligence equipped with uh, computer vision, uh, we can evaluate human ways to discern potential health red flags. Uh, imagine having a diagnostic lab right in your home bathroom, continuously monitoring and giving feedback on your health. Our smart toilet is poised to provide such value in your home setting. For example, our optical sensors will monitor human stool in the toilet environment so that we can capture digital biomarker from human excrete, such as volume, color, morphology, and, and such. Right, unconventional, um, but I'm sure very crucial as you mentioned earlier. How long did it take to make the small toilet? I think it's a, uh, it's mostly about like a 20 years ago, my, uh, my late mentor started this project. The inspiration arose from understanding that our waste is a gold mine of information about our health. So my late mentor, Dr. Sanjeev Sangambir, who was a chair of the radiology, conceived this idea almost 20 years ago. Uh, in 2016, I was the one who suggested the realization of this project, and we envisioned together leveraging this routine act, converting, converting human waste into the daily health checkup, providing crucial insight, open, uh, which often overlooked. Dr. Gambier and I always emphasize, don't waste your waste. And by not wasting our waste, Dr. Park, you're able to assess perhaps our medical condition based on our excretion. Is that correct then? That's what we're hoping to do. Did you think you'd win the Ig Nobel Prize for, for the smart toilet? To be honest, the idea of securing an Ig Nobel Prize never really crossed my mind, actually. <laughs> I became aware of my work's nomination of the award post my 2020 paper publication in 2020. But 
Three years went by with no update. In the meantime, I was prim uh, primarily driven by the healthcare potential of the smart toilet, but having this accolade just reaffirmed the significance and the novelty of our work. I was so much surprised and staying when with I first heard about it. Yes. Right, and Dr. Park, staying with the significance of this particular work, could you tell us a bit more about it? What makes it so important? Why does the smart toilet matter? Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest with you, the best healthcare uh, uh, act will be like a drawing your blood every day. But the drawing blood requires needle, which is a crucial step to secure uh, secure biospecimen from your blood, uh, your uh, your body. But one, one primary uh, drawback is basically um, it requires a needle that people will hate it. So... I think uh, the natural uh, resource for the healthcare is from your stool and urine. So we're basically saying that it can be very much, you know, um, proactive healthcare rather than a reactive healthcare. And Dr. Park, for those who are not experts in this particular field, could you tell us yes. a bit about the number of illnesses or diseases that can be uh, deduced, should I say, from your stool or your urine? Oh yes, um, I think it the um, it has a numerous applications. I can I cannot actually tell you the exact numbers because uh, we're still actually enumerating the disease that we can diagnose or we're making a treatment. Uh, but uh, I, what I can tell you is the very simple process that we can uh, we can diagnose is basically from the uh, from like a constipation from the uh, monitoring the stool morphology or pelvic floor dysfunctions, or even like a UTI, urinary tract infection from a urinary volume, uh, uh, urinary biomarkers activity checking. So these are all possibility that we can extend uh, disease monitoring in, uh, in, in related, uh, relating with um, genital urinary tract and the gastrointestinal tract. Right, I see. Dr. Park, simply speaking, how popular do you suppose the smart toilets will be among the general public? Yeah, I think uh, nowadays, I think nobody realized this kind of technology exists. But I envision that the smart toilet gaining significant traction in homes due to its, uh, its number of advantage. Its non-invasive nature combined with the capability to offer instantaneous Health inside position it as a, a valuable asset. Uh, including Korea, Eastern Asia uh, seems to poise an ideal starting point, especially given the prevalent use of electronic bidet system. In Korea, roughly half of the household utilize these systems, while Japan's uh, adoption rate is notably higher, ranging between 72 and 80 percent. In contrast, the United States showcases a minimal uptake, falling below a mere of 2 to 3%. As awareness grows, I expect a notable increase in adoption of the smart toilet in the future, in near future. Right, hopefully, our fingers crossed for that. Dr. Park, I ask as a layperson, what would be the uh, risks perhaps with regard to privacy concerns in the mass yes. adoption of the smart toilet, do you think? I think one of the major drawback of our system is we're using the optical sensor, which is known to be a camera. And as you know, camera and toilet doesn't get along each other. So that may be the one of the biggest hurdle. Uh, but the thing is, the reason why we chose the camera as a sensor is because it's the most well-developed sensor in the world. Because as you can see in your cell phone, in your, uh, in your computer, there's a, always been a camera over there. So which means it's really well developed and um, and growing um, artificial intelligence, especially in the field of uh, computer vision, that really enhanced the use of the camera as a sensor. So, uh, but the thing is, because of use of camera, people may have an apprehension of using those system as a uh, healthcare sentinel. So. That's uh, that related to the privacy issues. And there's another concern about the smart toilet system, which is ethical concerns. Because uh, smart toilet system is poised to be working as passively as possible, which means without consent, we may actually uh, 
uh, collect the human health data without any uh, without knowing uh, people who's using the toilet. So they raise a lot of ethical concerns too. But we're working on it to resolve all those issues. Right, good to know. Dr. Park, is the future of healthcare, do you suppose, preventative strategies now? Absolutely. Healthcare is increasingly focusing on the preventive measure. Early detection and timely intervention result in improved health outcomes and can also lessen the strain of our healthcare system. Stanford launched a new initiative called Precision Health, where the aim is to actively monitor human health with the goal of keeping healthy individuals healthier rather than waiting for them to fall ill. Right, of course. Dr. Park, what do you believe is the importance of such quirky awards like the Ig Nobel Prize? A word like an Ig Nobel add a bit of fun to a serious world of research. They underline the idea that innovation can be both impactful, uh, impactful and entertaining. It's a brilliant way to engage the public, explaining science and making it more relatable. One of the primary challenge in developing the smart toilet was addressing the sensitive nature of human waste. As you know, human waste always been regarded as a uh, taboo in almost every culture. I believe the Ig Nobel Prize might help reduce some of this these reservations surrounding this topic. Right, well, Dr. Park, one man's waste or trash, so to speak, is another man's treasure, they say. Um, I was wondering, at the, with regard to the Ig Nobel Prize, Dr. Park, are there any fun aspects of that prize that you'd like to share? I understand there's a cash award for the winners yes. as well. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, there's a cash award, uh, which is uh, about 10 trillion Zimbabwean dollar. 10 trillion. But you know, in the United States currency equivalent, it's a four dollar. <laughs> right, so, I see. Yeah. And interestingly, they sent me the note in a PDF format, which means I have to print it out. That means it actually automatically make it as a counterfeit. <laughs> but interesting thing is this note has never been uh in using the public, so which means I'm not uh, it's not legal to use it. <laughs> right, of course so, not. Yeah, that's the one anecdote I can share with you. Dr. Park, aside from your smart toilet, of course, were there any other inventions at this year's Ig Nobel Prize that caught your attention? Oh, yeah. I think uh, one of the biggest inventions that I can see is the, the chapstick, which makes you uh, have a salty feeling, even though it's not a salty at all. That's really a good invention. I think it's a, one of the most innovative inventions so that um, it, it introduced a way to reduce the daily consumption of the sodium. That's, uh, I think it's one of the clevers. Um, I, I never actually seen at all. Right, I have to agree with you. Apart from the smart toilet, I was quite impressed with that as well. Dr. Park, let's uh, end now then with perhaps a few words about your future plans. Yeah, moving forward, our team is partnering with the smart cities, including Naomi in Saudi Arabia, to establish the smart toilet as the essential health monitors. In this smart city, proactive healthcare will hinge on the preventive measure that we discussed uh, earlier. As a result, smart toilet can function as an interconnected health sentinel. And we're also engaging with NASA to assess its use for health surveillance during deep space missions. In the upcoming decades, one of the NASA's key objective is to send astronauts to Mar Mars. The journey alone to Mars could take seven to 12 months, months exposing astronauts to challenging environments. Together, we're conceptualizing the new, new healthcare framework for deep space called precision space health focusing on proactive healthcare, uh, healthcare monitoring in space setting. The horizon is vast, and I'm excited to continue our journey. It's a, it's a very impressive list of endeavors right there. Dr. Park, thank you so much for making the time to speak with us live about your uh, inventions and more. Thank you so much for having me today. Right. Well, that ends this week's editions of Issues and Insiders. Have a great weekend and see you next Monday.